gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Flying without wings. Westlife. Westlife are one of the most successful groups of all time. And they're millions of fans, including Joyce in New Brighton, who's just beside herself with excitement that they've just announced in August they will be coming out to two huge concerts at Wembley. So from no stage during lockdown to the biggest stage of all. And Shane Filan from Westlife joins us now. Shane, how's the homeschooling been going? Have the kids gone back to school? Linda, how are you? Yeah, they're back at school this week. Well, my, my daughter actually is in secondary school, so she's not actually back uh, till after Easter, actually. Um, so, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, it's just weird, you know, being, even kids going back to school, even the thoughts of that, it's, the day is going to be so different compared to use, what it's used to. You know, the last four months has been obviously complete lockdown. So it's uh, definitely a change in, uh, in scenery. All right. Absolutely. Well, a lot of dads have said to me they've been made up to have the kids to themselves for the best part of a year. You know, it's a year you'll never get back, isn't it? That time with them because childhood's so precious and goes so quickly, doesn't it? I, I think it's been brilliant to have them home. 100% Linda, yeah, I totally agree with that because it's, you know, you get to bond with them in a, in a way that you never would have before and do things and be out in the garden or whatever it may be, even if you're in lockdown, you're playing rugby together, you're going for a cycle, whatever, you know, stuff like that, that you just might not have, you take for granted, you know, in, in normal circumstances, but you kind of work out things to do as a, as a, as a family and stuff and even cooking and, you know, our kids have been getting involved in cooking and like watching a, you know, we'd have a movie on a Wednesday night, we'd have a movie on a Saturday night and we, you know, different kids get to pick the movies and stuff like that. And <laughs> it's just been like, you know, there is positives out of it. Obviously there's a lot of negatives out of the last year. It's been horrendous, but um, as, as family goes, I think we've, we've bonded amazingly over the last year. And again, like you said, a year that you would have never got, you know. You haven't had to get your head around algebra all over again, have you? Yes, I definitely do. And it was funny because I was actually I was actually decent at maths in school. So we have this thing with online schooling where Gillian, my wife, she's amazing. She like she organizes the whole household, obviously, and she's just so good at it. And I'm like, right, OK, I'm going to take the boys now together or whatever. Right. right OK, now we're going to do maths. Right, Shane, you can do the maths. And I'm like straight in. And I love doing the maths. I get excited about it. And because um, I used to love maths when I was younger. But then when it comes to Irish or French and stuff like that, I'm like, oh, here we go. No. <laughs> Um, when, when you were sitting in geography, <laughs> not your forte, no. When you were sitting in geography at Summerhill College or whatever with Keen and Mark, I mean, were, were you ever yeah. dreaming age 12 of, of being one of the most successful bands of all time? Do you know what? I think <laughs> at, at, when we started school together, I think we always had dreams of it, but it was never going to happen, obviously. That's why we were literally in school studying every day, doing the exams, trying our best to, to get an education and but it was, um, yeah, we, we had the dreams, you know, even back then, you know, when we were kind of 15, 16, we were watching bands like obviously Take That and Boys Own in the UK. And then obviously, you're, you're, you know, you're listening to Backstreet Boys. Backstreet Boys were our biggest, probably our biggest influence um, because their music really appealed to us as kids um, because they had a bit of an edge to them and stuff. And they were still pop, but they had a bit of an edge. And uh, we wanted to be the Backstreet Boys, basically. Um, and it's, you know, little did we know what was going to happen uh, a few years later, you know, when it all kicked off. But when you were kids yourself, you and your brothers and sisters, because there were seven of you, what did your mum and yeah. dad have on in the background on, on the on the radio or on the, the stereogram? What were they listening to? Uh, my dad was a huge, uh, my dad was a great singer. He loved to sing. Um, so I definitely got, a, I think, from him. Uh, my mum wasn't great at singing. Um, <laughs> she liked to whistle a lot. <laughs> but uh, when it came to singing, my dad used to play a lot of Jim Reeves, uh, Michael Holiday, uh, Joseph Locke. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Like that. He, loved, he loved Jim Reeves. He loved Jim Reeves. He was, you know, Bing Crosby was a huge, a huge influence as well. I think growing up as a kid, um, he was like, you know, dad was like, he's class. He's cla Frank Sinatra's good, but Bing Crosby is class. <laughs> you know, and that's what he used to say. You know, his just his tone was so much better. He felt or whatever. So I think I, you know, that obviously, I suppose, sunk into me as a kid growing up. You know, to try and I don't know, you know, try and become a better singer. And 
it's stuff like that, you know, as life goes on, you look back at stuff now and think, you know, them kind of things that he said to me was so important, you know. Yeah, they were all influences, weren't they? They were all, you know, sinking in, weren't they? I mean, you know, people like Joseph Locke, obviously, would not be a, an influence to you. But, you know, that big ex-guardsman, uh, you know, what was he, six foot six tall with a huge voice? Your dad yeah. seemed to like the fellas with the, you know, the big voices, the big stage presence. Absolutely, yeah, and, and like Bing Crosby was was such a an incredible like Christmas time. You'd always hear Bing Crosby and White Christmas was the big song in our house every year. And um, but you know, as I, as I got a bit older, then obviously you, you start listening to so many other people, like even Lionel Richie and people like that. When I started seeing the first kind of videos on you know on, on I remember watching Hello Lionel Richie. Um, I'm watching that video going, oh my God, man, you know, he's so famous. And, and then obviously as you get older, you get into Michael Jackson, all the other artists that were coming out at the time, Madonna and stuff. And it was just, it was just, it fascinated me. It fascinated me music and, and, and pop music in particular. And w w I mean, songwriting has turned out to be your forte and then some. So w were you being inspired? Were you, were you already trying your hand at songwriting? When I was younger, I didn't. Yeah, I actually, do you know what? It's funny because myself and Mark were talking about this the other day because, you know, we've been doing a bit of songwriting for the new album and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, we're, we're, you know, the, as the years go on, we get more and more into it every year. And um, this album in particular, it's, I don't know what's happened. Maybe it's lockdown and stuff. And we've been getting really, really into songwriting for this album, which is very exciting. But going back to it all, we were talking about, do you remember how this whole thing kind of started, you know? And we started talking about a song that myself and Mark wrote uh, back at the very, very beginning, uh, like we're talking 23 years ago, called Together Girl Forever. And it was a song that we were writing, you know, walking home from school and stuff. And we used to go into the park right beside the school and beside the cathedral and stuff. And we'd sit in the bench and we'd be like, right, we need to come up with a verse or come up with this chorus. And that was a song that we ended up getting made into a CD that we played for Louis Walsh. Um, and that was a song that kind of got us, I suppose, our, our start um, in a way. But um, yeah, it's it's crazy to think that songwriting back then was actually just as important, I suppose, as it is now. And you got the girl forever, didn't you? In Gillian, I, she's Keane's cousin. Yeah, the girl forever. It, it, it was about Gillian. The song was about Gillian, <laughs> uh, my wife now, and the mother of my three children. So yeah, the song worked out pretty good. <laughs> So cool. Definitely impressed her. <laughs> you know, I was thinking, you know, with St. Patrick's Day being this week, you know, I, there's less than 5 million people in Ireland, aren't there? It's something like 4.9 million. And yet there's 60, 70, 80 million people around the world who've got ancestors from Ireland. It's amazing that such a small island has had the cultural impact it's had globally. Is it something... In the storytelling tradition, how, how how do you figure it? I don't know. It's it's so true, though. You're right. You know, there's so many people, especially, you know, Liverpool, Manchester, all that area, um, you know, in England. Um, then you obviously yeah. got America. There's like 40 million American, Irish American citizens and stuff and with heritage and stuff. And it's just even I was like watching the, the news today and I was watching their, their T-shirt, you know, on telly, the head of our government kind of talking about to, to Joe Biden about the heritage and they were doing like a virtual zoom for their <laughs> every year to the shamrock, you know, the, the gift of the shamrocks to the, the American president. So that usually the teacher goes to the white house, gives them the, you know, the, the a ceremony of giving them a lot of shamrocks and stuff in a bowl. And it's a very, it's a thing that's been on for like, you know, years, decades. Um, but this time it was virtual and I was watching it cause I was just interested by it. And Joe Biden obviously is probably, the most American president that, you know, Irish American president that we've, you know, that we've ever seen after yeah. JFK. So it was just a, remarkable to listen to him talking about Ireland and his heritage and stuff like that. And then you realize, you know, the American president has Irish heritage, you know, and it's, it's just incredible to, to look at that. And then, you, as you said, there's 70, 80 million people with Irish heritage around the world. So, yeah, we've definitely we've definitely had an influence <laughs> um, on the world as Irish people. Definitely. It's fantastic. Have you been to, to JFK's homestead in Ireland and have you been to, uh, to New Ross, where his folks uh, set sail from for their life in America and shaken hands with that amazing statue of JFK at New Ross? Ross, have I you ever done that? Well, I actually haven't done that. And, and I'm a huge JFK fan. Like my wife will tell you, like I'm proper obsessed. I've read so many books about him and just his whole, his whole thing. I'm fascinated by his, his, you know, his, his life, his death, everything, you know, everything that went on. 
Um, but it's uh, I went to the JFK Memorial in when I was over in Boston last year, or the mm-hmm. year before last, sorry, 2019. Um, I keep saying last year, but then you forget nothing happened last year. Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> 2020, just nothing happened. Wipe Nobody went out. anywhere. <laughs> Yeah, so 2019, just after the Westlife tour, we we went to Boston because Jillian's family, uh, his brother, her brother lives in Boston, so we went over there anyway. We went to the the memorial, you know, the the library, the JFK library, and it was just, you know, it was fascinating to see all the stuff about him. And I'd read probably two or three books, one about his Irish visit. Um, you know, when he came to Ireland just before, like six months before he was assassinated, he'd a, he'd a really famous visit to Ireland where he came for four days, and he kind of wasn't meant to come to Ireland, but he wanted to go to Ireland, so he just put it in his schedule. And uh, it's a really, really good book. Um, but yeah, just like amazing. I'm really, really fascinated by him, actually. Do you find the more that you go through life yourself and the more experience, like you're a, you're, you know, you're a dad of, of three youngsters and they're going to be making their way in the world, do you find you become more interested in, in heritage and, and history and, and genetics and you know, the talents that are handed down through, the, through families? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's a very good point, actually. In the last few years, I've noticed that an awful lot more about myself where I'm I'm definitely reading a lot more. I wasn't really into reading books before, um, probably a few years ago, and I started reading. And then I, I realized I needed glasses when I started reading because <laughs> I, I started reading books. And then I, I used to get dizzy when I stood up. And I was like, oh, my God, what, what the hell is this? And um, one of my mates said to me, oh, buddy, you need glasses. And I was like, what? I said, I don't need glasses. And he goes, no, trust me, you need, to, you need glasses. So go get your eyes tested. So one of my eyes is slightly weaker than the other, which hence made me dizzy when I stood up after reading. Um, but anyways, long story short, I got into reading and, and, you know, reading books about JFK and different things about Irish heritage and just even like stuff about the streets of Sligo. There's a book called The Streets of Sligo in, in, in my hometown and just hearing about all the different things that went on in Ireland and all the history of Ireland. And when you're back in school, you don't take as much, I suppose, um, you know, you, you don't take as much notice of it, you know, but then when you're when you're getting a bit older and you see all these documentaries and different things happening on Irish television or on Netflix or all these things now, you nearly get more interested in the books and start reading stuff. And so I'm into a lot of that with, with when it comes to history about Ireland, especially. Um, but I think everywhere, you know, Irish English connection, Irish American connection. Um, it's just it's very interesting. Um, and I've got more and more into it. And the kids now are starting to ask questions about stuff like that. And I can tell them the answers in detail which i wouldn't have known before no indeed not and all the cultural connections which your your kids will eventually see as well around the world and the uh the the films you know i mean films like the quiet man and ryan's daughter will be you know probably won't cross their path but the most recent films that have featured irish heritage certainly will and all the irish uh movie stars that that have come out you know whether it's patrick bergen or whether it's richard harris or maureen o'hara whoever for a small island Island again to produce these almighty talents for the world stage is is i, I it, find really fascinating it really is you know even when you think of bands um you know you think of u2 and obviously yeah. westlife and the Cobra and the cranberries and you know dermot kennedy loads of different people that are you know nile horn obviously one direction all these different bands that have you know come out of ireland um and it's 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 amazing to to kind of see it, you know. And then actresses even like Saoirse Ronan, my daughter's big into drama. She loves acting. She loves all that kind of stuff. And you know, she's a big fan of Saoirse Ronan and stuff. And you see how well she's doing. And so many other actors and actresses now really breaking into the scene. Like it's it's more bigger now ever than from Ireland, which is which is amazing to see. Um, but you know, it just shows you, you know, there's opportunity out there. You know, you got to go get it. And you got you to gotta dream big, I suppose, like we did 20 years ago. But nothing's, no, nothing's impossible, you know. You just got to make it happen if you can. Have you, have you still friendships that you keep either from school or from growing up in, in Sligo and from when you used to help out in your, your mum and dad's diner business during the school halls? Yeah, definitely. I've, a lot of my friends, like, you know, I have a few close friends that I've been friendly with since I was a teenager. Um, you know, and it's one of those things that people say, you'll, you'll always have one or two good friends. And that's usually it, you know, they, they'll be your best friends forever. My dad used to always say that to me, you know, you're lucky to have one or two really great friends. Um, and I still have them, which is amazing. Um, but yeah, like obviously, you know, looking back on the time in, in Carlton Cafe growing up, I grew up in a cafe, lived over the cafe, you know, in, in one of the main streets of Sligo. And it was an incredible upbringing. I had seven brothers and sisters, my mum and dad. 
you know worked hard and stuff and we had a we had a business and there was always there was always you know there was always amazing food to have or fresh chips or whatever it may be and different things that we used to have every day and um i felt very lucky um you know so and now my my the same building is still in my family and, and my brother has a, a like a big supermarket kind of you know like a, a city uh, like a town supermarket in there now a uh, very successful business and it's great to see it you know 45 years later wow. it's still in the family yeah. and it's still a successful building which is lovely to see and it's a very proud proud thing for us fantastic you were saying that you, your mom wasn't particularly musical bay but she didn't give up until she'd spoken to louis walsh about you did she absolutely yeah you know she for what you know for what it was in music she definitely uh never gave up as right she um you know she was the one that made the call and she was the one that made it all happen um you know and unfortunately my mum passed away um about a year and a half mm -hmm. ago now uh, december 2019 um and it was funny you know around the time of her funeral the boys used to say to me you know without your mum I, I got amazing amazing messages from the boys at the time and obviously we we're all at our, at our funeral it was before covid so we were all there and it was um it was just a beautiful moment for us to be able to sing for her and stuff um but they were like we were chatting about even the day before you know and when the boys came to see me and they were saying you know like your mum without your mum you know we wouldn't be here man you know your your, your mum was the reason this all happened yeah. you know without that phone call we'd be we, we'd be nothing um and it really it really kind of meant so much more to me then than ever before you know they might have said something similar before but they really really said it and they sent me some beautiful messages all three of them and it was um it was amazing to see you know i suppose what what she really meant to them you know and it was uh, she got she got an amazing send off at her funeral. It was lovely and it was um yeah amazing. It's fantastic, amazing it's fantastic to have that relationship and what you meant to her as well. And uh, you know the, the the way she worshipped you so much that she would go to that you know that degree to uh, to keep telephoning Louis Walsh and and you lost the big man your dad uh, you know a few months ago and I, I know that's yeah. been terribly hard and. Uh, the ultimate heartbreak has it helped being from a big family though having your siblings having your own children uh, absolutely you know 2020 kind of the, the the horrible year of 2020 for everybody but for me for me definitely it was the definitely the worst year of my life but it started in december 2019 if you know what i mean and um nine months later then my dad passed away uh, from cancer as well so but you know i was so lucky in in one way to have six brothers and sisters that were older than me and we helped each other get through it you know it's, it's very difficult to to lose a parent is, is obviously something that everyone dreads their whole life when's it going to happen or what's going to happen to them and then the two of them go together it was very hard um but in saying that too you know my my mom and dad were married you know 55 years they were you know the most incredible love story the two of them honestly you know it was it was unbelievable to watch them um wow. as i grew up and stuff and my dad, my dad couldn't, he just couldn't be without her. You know, he was, he was, he was obviously very sick with cancer, but in a way I'm, I'm happy they're both together. You know, I'm happy that we're both together because my dad wouldn't have, he wouldn't have, um, you know, he just, he would have found it so hard to be without her. And it was a very difficult time for him. And, um, yes. you know, it was just one of those things that you're, you're nearly glad they're together again. And, um, but it was it was horrible. Yeah, it was it was a very tough time. But yeah, family is very important when stuff like that happens. Oh, Everybody gosh, to get yeah. coming together. Yeah. And does it does it does that uh, kind of life experience make it harder to sing and to songwrite, or does it actually help you to have somewhere to put the emotion? Absolutely, I think it's I think it it really really helps songwriting, um, and I found that in the last few months. Um, you know, even like sometimes when I'm, when I'm kind of writing chords or li lyrics or different things, I'd, be, I'd have a, I've always like got a picture with them, you know, near me, like I've, you know, a, a big frame up and stuff with a picture of them and stuff. And they always kind of, um, they always inspire me, even, you know, when they were, when they were alive, they were amazing parents. And now even they're, they're not with me anymore, but they're still with me, you know, they're, they're still with me all the time. And it's, uh, it's lovely to have that, you know, it's, it's a comfort kind of thing. Um, and hopefully they're watching down, looking, looking after me and keeping an eye on me. But there's definitely something brewing when it comes to the songwriting, for sure, in the last, uh, <laughs> the last few months. You betcha. And, and your alternative family, of course, Westlife, you know, you reunited two years ago after being apart for, for several years. Have you been able to see each other in the last lockdown year, if only on Zoom? Have you been able to catch up with each other's families and the news? 
Uh, to be honest, no, we haven't really seen each other because obviously it's it is complete another. Uh, we're in and out of lockdowns. Like I have, you know, I haven't. Se I've seen Keen because Keen's in Sligo, so we saw during some of the during some of the kind of um, you know breaks in lockdown where it was slightly eased or whatever. We could meet up as two families and stuff like that. We met up a few times, but um, like I haven't seen Mark in over a year. I haven't seen Nikki in over a year. Um, which is really strange, but I've seen more of them because we're on Zoom all the time. We're doing these, you know, meetings and different things that we're, we're recording an album um, <laughs> virtually at the moment, which is which is so weird. But in in some way, it's it's actually it's actually really nice because we're getting to see each other a bit more now because of this, um, and we're we're definitely more in touch as a band in general, um, whether it be on WhatsApp or text or whatever. We're uh, we're closer than we've probably ever been because we're made to be apart, <laughs> which sounds a bit strange, but it's it's the way it's worked out, which is lovely for this for this album and, and I suppose the future of the band. So after a year of lockdown and no stage, you're coming out storming. You've got this great news about signing with with a new contract with Warner, and you're coming out with two concerts on the biggest stage of all, Wembley. So from no stage to Wembley, amazing. How do you get match fit for that? <laughs> this is it the rehearsals you know the, the rehearsals are you know going to be uh it's going to be amazing it's going to be very exciting linda you know it's it's obviously wembley stadium is um you know it was something that we wondered would it happen this year obviously it, it was meant to happen last year and then it got put off to this year and because of the pandemic and but now with the the government restrictions and stuff um you know it's 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 at the moment it's officially happening so it's going to be on the 21st of august and then now we've added a second date which is for us, it's like wow, you know, we it's a, it's like the pinnacle of our career, this gig, and to get to play it, you know, a second night now, um, because the first one sold out. It's it's amazing, and it's it's definitely going to be the most probably important weekend of our career. But also, it feels like I was saying this today as well to the boys. Actually, we were chatting, and it, it feels like a, a kind of a start to our career again. You know, um, mm. it was like there was a massive pause button hit, and now we're coming back and. We're getting to play Wembley Stadium, the most famous stadium in the world. It's like it's it's not just a gig. This thing is a this thing is a, is a a weekend in the music industry. To after all that everyone's been through last year, this is going to be starting off a whole new thing of music again. Um, and we're I suppose you know going to be a a big part of that. But it, it means an awful lot, not just to us on stage. It means a lot to the people that are going to be at the concert, looking around, seeing people beside them, you know, and being able to hug people or being able to sing songs together it may be it's um yeah it's going to be one hell of a one hell of a weekend and one hell of a comeback as uh, i'm sure it's going to be um, as a rebirth it, it's amazing isn't it so it's, it's almost like a yes, poetic yeah, rebirth. yeah thing about yeah. it because we've all reconnected we found a, a there was a disconnect going on wasn't there in in society now we've reconnected with community with neighbors with friends with family we found a new respect for perhaps uh, jobs that were maybe disregarded uh, before you know like we've a new respect for how hard it is being a cleaner and how important Important it is being a cleaner, the, a professional cleaner. In this year of when Absolutely. hygiene has been everything, we, we now perhaps yeah. realise that it turns out that the people who run the country are the people in all these kind of jobs. Absolutely, one hundred percent, and healthcare workers, and you know, people that drive the ambulances, and all these, all these different things that go on that you think is just part of everyday life. But without them, we can't survive. You know, and. And you realize that when you're a singer or when you're whatever you may do for a living, it's um, everybody's job is so important in the world at the moment. Um, but I think it's I think it's a massive re rebirth, as you said, but a rebirth, not just on music, a rebirth on how we look at the world. You know, I think countries are going to be a lot more friendlier to each other. I think people are going to look after each other a bit more and go, listen, this thing's, you know, if something like this happens again, it can just rip the world apart. We need to look after each other here, you know, and in every walk of life. Um, and I think it's going to be a, I hope it's going to be a, just a better world going forward. It's not a bad ambition for, for your three, Nicole and Patrick and Shane, is it, to give them a better world, the other side of this? Absolutely, yeah. And I think family is going to mean an awful lot more, just like you said there a second ago, family and, and respect for family and respect for people's, I suppose, privacy, for respect for space and being able to go, you know what, we don't need to meet up with somebody this weekend or we don't need to go there on holidays. We don't need to do stuff like that. That's uh, it's superficial. You know, we don't need to 
we can be at home, we can watch a movie together, we can play cards together. You know, like the thing of playing cards that nobody ever does, like, you know, that's become such a popular thing. Or playing board games again. <laughs> Stuff like that is so important and, and so much fun. And I think it gives kids more memories, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's going to be a very, I don't know, interesting, interesting world and hopefully a, 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 a more, I don't know, happier world going forward. Who gets to choose the movie and the family this weekend then? Whose turn is it? This weekend, I think it's it's Patrick. I think this weekend. Um, so yeah, it was. Uh, we we kind of watch one. We probably watch two or three a week, um, and it's it's just amazing, you know, because it's it kind of everyone gets excited about it. what movie you're gonna pick. Oh, I don't like that movie. I don't like that movie. So the person <laughs> gets to choose. And that's it. It's basically whatever that person wants, we watch it. Um, and if we've seen it before, we have to watch it again. But usually, we try and pick a new one. Um, but it's. Uh, it's so good. It's so much fun. Yeah. Negotiating with your kids is, you know, it, it's, it makes working in a band a doddle after that, doesn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> brilliant. It's, right to, it's brilliant to catch up with you, Shane. All the very best for what looks like an enormous and exciting year ahead for you. All the best to you and your lovely family. Great talking to you. Bye for now, Shane. Thanks, Linda. Take care. Thanks a lot. Cheers.